so good to see those of you in the room. And can we give a special shout out to everybody tuning in online? What's up, online church? We're so glad you're here down in Virginia, Florida, up in, uh, somebody's tuning in from like Las Vegas this morning. That seems pretty cool. I don't even know what time it is there, but you need Jesus if you're in Vegas. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. So glad you're here. My name is Will. If we haven't had the chance to meet yet, I'm one of our pastors and just honored uh, to be able to uh, lead alongside an amazing staff and team and church. You guys are awesome. And so I'm just so thankful to to be a part of what God is doing right here in the place that I grew up in. And so just so thankful uh, to be here today. We are in uh, the final episode, if you will, of this series called Warrior. We've been talking about what does it look like to be a warrior. We've said warriors are champions for others, right? And we're going to fight. We also need to know that the fight is also inside today. We're going to talk about boldness and what does it look like to live a life of, of courage and moving forward, moving beyond maybe the, the scary parts of our lives, if you will, during this final week. We've been looking uh, at this verse, this passage of scripture together, sort of a theme verse, uh, and I've said it's really the most, maybe in my opinion, the most intimidating verse in all, or verses in all of scripture. This is what it is, because this is, when we read this, it should cause us to live differently, to have a different call to action in our lives. It's found in Matthew 28. It says that Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go, like make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you. And surely I'm with you always to the very end of the age. This is why we live This is why we do the things we do as a church. This is why we do the things we do as followers of Jesus, church aside, you, individual. This should be why you do what you do. It's the cause from which we fight for. And we know that the battle that we have to wage war against is inside, but there is some action steps we need to do outside as well. And we'll talk about that today. But we also know, we look at this and we say, uh, we have to go to all nations So it's reach people. All nations means all people, which sounds pretty scary. It's a lot of people. How am I going to do that? And we've just said as a church, like we aren't going to do it alone. Uh, We're going to do this within partnership and collaboration. And over the last few weeks, we've highlighted a handful of our ministry partners. We had uh, one child in, our global partner. And then last week, we had Harvest 912, a local partner. And this morning, I just want to highlight in another partner that we have as a church, and that is the Erie City Mission. Come on, somebody. We love the Erie City Mission. Um, they're guys from the program here this morning, which is so cool. We're so glad that you're here in part uh, of, of church and so many of you that are around here. If you have no clue what the Erie City Mission is, like, what is this mission? What is this thing? The Erie City Mission uh, is designed and set up to meet the physical, uh, emotional, and spiritual needs of people right here in our community. They tackle things like poverty, homelessness, addiction, and recovery. Like They've got amazing programs. I don't know if you know this. They have programs for men, women and youth and their youth program is really amazing and they've got a lot of amazing things that they do and so listen you need to know what they're about in fact uh, i was talking with um brian who is the uh the new director at, at the erie city mission just over this last year or so and this is what he's asked me to tell you to take him up on he said invite your entire church just to come and see he's like call he wants to personally give you a tour of the city mission so you can see the kind of impact that you are a part of. You can see the programs. You can see the, the ways that we help as a church. And so take him up on his offer, church. I'm just saying he wants you to come and see. Because how many of you know when you see something and you experience it in a different way, it gives you a different level of value, doesn't it? You know, it's one thing to hear about the Erie City Mission, but it's another thing to be like, wow, this is what that means. We help provide meals for the homeless and we help these addiction recovery programs and, and this youth development and all this. That's what that means. And so that's what we get a chance to be part of. In fact, as a church, you should know that we serve down there 
uh, at least once a month, sometimes more. On the second Saturday, you can see the link on the screen if you want to get involved in that. There's different serve opportunities helping provide meals and, and, and things on Saturdays. It's an amazing opportunity for you to get involved in. In fact, we've got a team member who's here right now who took it upon himself. And, uh, you know, we, the city mission reached out to us. It was like, hey, we've got guys that want to come to the program or they want to come to church. They just don't have a way to get there because they don't have their driver's license. So if you've got somebody. And so we reached out to a team member and he was like, absolutely. So Sunday mornings, he drives to the Erie City Mission and he picks up guys. Come on. He picks up the van of crew here. So thank you so much. My friend Matt is the one who does that. He's so cool. He's an amazing guy. And so it's just a way that we can partner because these guys and these women, the people that are part of the program, all they need is hope and an opportunity and people that believe in them. And I believe that's what warriors are. We're champions for others. And we're going to fight the battles inside as well, but we're going to help other people. Would you mean that we're going to pray a blessing over the city mission before we dive in today? Father, we come before you. We thank you for these uh, the great men and women who are part of the Erie City Mission. God, thank you for the call that you've put on that organization, uh, not just to be uh, a, a place of help, God, but a place of hope. God, pointing them to Jesus. And so, Father, we thank you. I pray for favor upon uh, their, their vision and what they have for the future, God. Would you open doors that need to be open? And God, thank you that they have people that are there to, uh, that we can run alongside with and help tackle very important needs right here in our community. God, thank you that as a church, we've been able to step forward and be able to make a great impact with them. And so, Father, we just thank you. We pray for a blessing over them. Would you give them abundance? And it's in Jesus' name, everybody said amen and amen. Um, if you are a first-time guest here, I should have mentioned this in talking about the Erie City Mission. Uh, we donate $10 to the Erie City Mission just for you being here. And I won't know that you're here if you don't let us know. And so please tell a team member, fill out a connect card. But listen, that goes far beyond. In fact, as a church, we've given $62,000 to the Erie City Mission and the Life of Our Church, largely because of first-time guests. So please, we're not asking you to give us money so we can give it. We are going to give it if you let us know that you're here. Sound, sound good? Awesome. Amen. Amen. Come on. All right, we're going to close this collection of talks, this series, Warrior, and I feel compelled to leave us with this charge to do what we've been called to do. The passage that we read already in Matthew 28 says that we are to go into all nations, baptizing them, teaching them, uh, and reach people. And so we've talked about what does it look like to be a warrior, this champion, this fighter. And today we're going to talk about being bold. We're gonna, I'm going to give you just a, a few marks of a warrior, some, some, some pieces to the, your, your warrior puzzle, if you will, to know that you are, are living in such a way to be a, a warrior. In doing so, we're going to look at Matthew chapter 10. If you go back, there's a handful of chapters in your Bible. Uh, if you don't have a Bible, it's going to be on the screen. We'd love to get one to you as well if you don't have one. But in Matthew chapter 10 um, is a great place for you to read this week. I'm going to go through a handful of the verses, but uh, we're just going to kind of work through it together. Because uh, Jesus, in that Matthew 28, was towards the end, right? He was getting ready to leave and to ascend to heaven, where he is right now. And so he gave the rally cry, the call for them to do. But that wasn't the first time that he's called his disciples to do something. In fact, we see that time and time throughout Scripture. And in Matthew 10, this is sort of the, if you can picture like the locker room speech, right? The, the, the halftime speech, he's rallying the troops to go out and do the things that they're called to do. We find this in Matthew 10, verse 1. It says, Jesus called his 12 disciples to him. And he gives them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. Now, you've got the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, pulling you in saying, listen, listen, listen. This is what you're going to go out and do. You got to believe that those disciples were fired up, right? They're like, we're going to have the authority of Jesus. We can cure people. We can cast out demons. Like, let's go, right? Like, they've got to be fired up up and excited, like you can hear him pounding on the lockers, right? Like they're ready to go. And then he tells them, and if, if you don't know who the disciples are, in verses two and beyond, talks a little bit about that, who they are specifically. And then he tells them where to go, where not to go. That's pretty good instruction. But then he says this, he says, as you go, verse seven, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. 
And so what we need to recognize is Jesus is instructing his disciples, and this wasn't just a them thing, this is also a we thing. We need to recognize that a warrior, I'm going to give you a few of these today, a warrior is marked by who you represent. By who you represent. What do I mean by that? Well, if you look at the verses, it says Jesus called his disciples to him. He gave them his authority, and then he told them to go out. So he wasn't saying, hey, when you go out, go out and be you. No, he's saying, go out under my authority, my strength. You are part of my team. You are representing me. You are marked as a warrior by who it is that you represent. You think of our United States military. When they go out into battle, they're wearing the patch of the United States. They are not going out to battle as individual. They're going out to battle as a collective. They represent the United States of America, the greatest country in the world. And Jesus is teaching the disciples, hey, you represent me, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. It is not you anymore, Peter. It's Jesus. That's who you represent. That's who it is that you stand for. The Bible tells us that we are citizens in heaven. Our citizenship is in heaven. And so for us today, we need to recognize that if we are warriors, we're champions, we're, we're, we're fighters, and we're bold, that we need to own our position as warriors, and we need to be marked by who it is that we represent. It's not about you. It's about him. And because we represent Jesus, it leads us to this next mark And this is how we are marked. We're marked by how we live, by how we live. And so Jesus is saying, hey, you represent me. That's who it is. When you go into the battlefield, when you go and proclaim the good news that the kingdom is near, you're representing Jesus. You need to know today, church, that is true, but it also matters how you live. How you live actually matters. 2 Corinthians 5.20 also says this, that we are therefore Christ's ambassadors. Like God is partnering with us. It's not just his thing or our thing. It's an us thing, and we represent him. It says, as though God were making his appeal through us. So God is in this, we're in this unique partnership to be ambassadors for Christ, and so it says that we, Paul is encouraging, says we implore you, we beg you, we plead you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. How we live matters. You are marked by how you live and who it is that you represent. And this is good news, by the way. This is really good news because that means that you and me and we have a part to play. Like our lives actually matter. You need to know that. They actually matter. God does the saving, yes. But he partners with us to be a part of that that rescue mission. So the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, has called you to him. He knows you by name. But he also says how you live matters. You're worthy. You have value. You have value in God's plan A. You are needed in God's plan A. So no matter what it is you do or wherever you are, we should represent Jesus by how we live. It's who we represent and it's by how we live. It says, this in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old is gone, the new is here. It is not just the same old, same old anymore, meaning how you found Jesus and said yes to him versus how you are now should be different. My life five years, 10 years, 15 years ago should look different than it does right now. Why? Because I'm a new creation meaning old will, college will, high school will, middle school will, no longer. I'm a new creation. I've been called to something different and greater. 
how you live actually matters. And if I say it and I sing it that my life is surrendered to Jesus, a surrendered life is a changed life. And so we better live changed, different. Meaning when you give your life to Jesus and you've said yes to him, it doesn't mean you're perfect from that point forward. Don't, don't hear that. It means you've got work to do, but you've got the person who's gonna help you in the work. But you will live differently. You will act differently. You will say things differently. You will be different. Why? Because you're a new creation. Something new is happening. Colossians 3.17 says that whatever it is that you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus. And so whatever it is that we do, we should do it as if we are working for the Lord. As if I'm representing him. That's what it means to be a warrior. We're representing Jesus. Whatever it is that we do. And listen, we know from last week, right, that we don't fight the way that the world fights. Because the world says, take yours, get yours, whatever it may be, just have it. Hold on to it. But the kingdom says, give more. It's more blessed to give than it is actually to receive. The world says, hey, they hate you. You should hate them too. The kingdom says, no, 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 they hate you, pray for them. Pray for those who come against you. We live different because we are different. We're called to participate in this game called life. We're not cheerleaders. We're participants for the mission that God has called us to, to go to all the world, to reach people as we look through Matthew 10, you'll, you read that this week, I would encourage you to do so. Jesus, as he's instructing them, he's like, hey, I'm gonna give you the power. I'm giving you authority. You're gonna have the ability to do all of these things. And this is what's going to look like. And here's where you need to go. This is what you're supposed to say. But the rest of it, if you keep going down on those verses, he's like, hey, just because I'm the one sending you and just because you represent me doesn't mean it's gonna be easy. You need to know that being a follower of Jesus doesn't mean your life is easy. It's not easy. He's like, hey, people are gonna hate you. People are gonna try to stone you. People are gonna put you up in front of governors to try to lock you in prison. It's not gonna be easy just because you're with me, but it's gonna be worth it. He says, you still have to go. You still have to go and reach people. And he keeps going. He's like, hey, if somebody... Uh, is receptive of the message, man, bring the peace that you have from being with me. Bring that to them. If they're not receptive, shake the dust off and keep moving. What Jesus is instructing his disciples is like, hey, don't be so focused on everybody else and their opinions. Be focused on me. Stay with with me. He's encouraging them. Listen to this rally cry, locker room speech. They're getting ready to go out. He says this, you're gonna be like a sheep among wolves. I don't know about you, I don't even wanna be a human among wolves, <laughs> let alone a sheep, that's dinner. That's encouraging Jesus. He's like, hey, be as shrewd as serpents but harmless as doves. He's like, hey, you're gonna to have to flee from the attacks of people, but you don't fight the way the world does. You need to be as innocent or as harmless as doves. All in all, he's like, hey, people are gonna be happy with you. People are gonna be mad at you. Some of those people are gonna be your family. Some of those people are gonna be your workplace. Some of those people are gonna be people you think you know. Some of them are gonna be strangers. They're gonna hate you. Some of them are gonna love you. But don't be so concerned with them. Concern yourself with me. So as we keep reading in this chapter of Matthew 10, here's what I wanna encourage you with, that you've been called. Like you represent him, the king of kings. And if God calls you, then man's opinion or perspective does not matter. Because you have the God of the universe who has said, no, I've chosen you. And it should stop. You are chosen by God, placed by God in this moment of history with your unique gifts, your unique talents, your unique perspective to go and reach people. Like it or not, our lives are leading people 
somewhere. And the question is, is how you live, is it leading them closer to Jesus or further away? Do they look at you and be like, oh, you're one of those Jesus people. I don't want that Jesus. Or are you one of those Jesus people that they're like, I think I need to see what it is that's going on here. And by the way that you live, by the way that you serve, by the way that you give, by the way that you sacrifice your life, it is helping create a path to Jesus by your love, by your actions. It's how you live, it actually matters. And how you sacrifice will show who you represent. And when I say sacrifice, let's, let's break it down a little bit. We don't sacrifice for forgiveness, okay? We don't sacrifice for, for forgiveness. I don't give of time, treasures, and talents so that I can be saved. I don't do that. I do that in response to Jesus who laid down his life, sacrificed his life so that I can be saved. I just trust in what he did was enough and out of response of that, I sacrifice. Out of response of the goodness and of the love and of the mercy. So I don't, I don't do these things and, and give this and, and do that and be all of these things so that I can be saved. No, I'm, not sa- I'm already saved from hell. By trusting in Jesus. But I don't want to be, I don't want just fire insurance. You know what I mean? I don't want a key fob to heaven and be like, I'm good to go. No, I'm saved for something. God has called me. He says, I'm, you are a, you're an ambassador. You are a part of the rescue mission. You have a worth. You have a value. In fact, I need you to go to all the world to reach people. This is the call. This is the the mandate to share what it is that has happened to us and how we live actually matters. It's a mark of being a a warrior. You ever have one of those moments in life, maybe it's been recent, maybe not, but you just, you see something and you're like, that is so beautiful. And one of those moments that cause you just to stop and be like, Maybe it humbles you, kind of takes your breath away. For me, we'll get all sentimental here in church. It's, uh, I was walking in last week on my way in, and I saw the sunrise on the way in. I just stopped in the parking lot, as you can see. And I just, I loved it. I was like, wow, that is just so, so beautiful. I was kind of in, in awe of this, this, this moment I was so fortunate to have walking in you ever have one of those moments? Maybe it's a sunrise like that. Maybe it's a, a sunset. You just see the sky. Maybe for you, it's a good cheeseburger at a restaurant. It just took your breath away. Like whatever it may be, it doesn't have to be so picturesque. For me, one of them that just happened also this past week was my wife. She, we were driving, going to a friend's house. Come on, somebody. And uh, she was like, you want to go to the driving range? And I'm like... <laughs> Yes, I do. Like, um, she's like swung a golf club once in her entire life. She smoked one about 80 yards straight on the fly. Come on, somebody. Um, I got approval to put that picture up, but, um, but I'm, just, I'm just like in awe of these moments, right? That in my time I could have with my wife. What are the moments that you've just been in awe? What does it cause you to do? It causes you to maybe take a deep breath to remember how good life actually is. Maybe it causes you to share it. You, you post it on social media. Hey, look at the sun over Lake Erie again. <laughs> you know? But like those, if it's a restaurant and that cheeseburger, you're yelping that review, five stars, let's go. You're going home. You're telling everybody about it. In fact, you're not just telling people, you're bringing them to go with you, Right? Because one, you want to experience it again, but you want to look, see the look on their face when they bite into that juicy Lucy or whatever it may <laughs> be. Listen, I tell you that because, man, we can be so quick to share a great experience at a restaurant or something so beautiful like a sunrise or a sunset, something so breathtaking, something that just t- causes us the, that was awesome kind of moment. How like yet sharing about the one person 
who actually changed our lives for eternity, why does that just seem so impossible? Why does it seem so hard to share about the one who paved the way for you and me? And I'm just saying, hey, this is me too. Why is it so hard to, to share? Now listen, you are sharing the love of Jesus and you're sharing about how your life has been changed by how you live. But if you only serve and open doors and shut doors and do all these things and you serve and serve and serve and serve and serve and serve and serve, and serve, and serve all that does is just make you a nice person. If you don't ever tell somebody why it is that you do what you do, if you don't ever say, wait, wait, you know why I serve the way I do? Let me show you. Let me teach you about it. And this is the last mark of a warrior I want to give you this morning is this, is a warrior is marked by what you say. Because if I don't ever tell you why I'm doing the things that I'm doing, then I'm just doing those things for no reason. But if I told you, hey, I'm doing this because my life has been forever changed by Jesus. I, I met the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and I'm just going to speak up about him and Say what you want about me. I, I, I love him, and so that's what I'm going to do. And it causes something to shift and change in other people. As you go down to Matthew 10, as he's giving them those warnings and kind of talking through, hey, people are going to do this and do that. Verse 27, he says this. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim it from the roofs, meaning what you learn on Sunday or Saturday or, or what you learn in your quiet time or whatever it is that God you know, revealed to you through a worship song or whatever it is that moment is not meant to be kept just for you. It's meant to be kept for the world, to proclaim it, to speak that out, to let God use you, partner with you to go into all the world, to proclaim it from the roofs. Because that... Sunrise experience is great, but when I showed my wife that picture, it was different. I had a different experience. I got to experience it all again through her, her life. So it matters what we say. How do we speak up? Will we speak up about Jesus? And he keeps going on as he kind of gives them this warning. He says this in Matthew 10, 32. He says, whoever acknowledges me before others... I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever disowns me before others, I will disown before my Father in heaven. Those are some cold words. Tough words. Like, Jesus can disown me? Wait, wait, I've been called. And maybe you look at that, you read that verse, you're like, well, I won't disown Jesus. I don't put him away. I don't disown him. And, and maybe you think about the times where maybe somebody's pressed you in your faith and you've been defending your faith in those moments. You're like, yeah, yeah, I'm not disowning him. I'm not doing that. I, I'm speaking in those, those little moments. And, and maybe you, you've had these thoughts. I've had these thoughts that like I would get into a situation, gun to my head, tell me, do you believe in Jesus? And if you do, I will shoot. And I would just say, yes, I believe in Jesus. Like I've had those thoughts, those moments in my life. How often has that actually happened? It's never happened to me. I've never been in that kind of situation with that kind of pressure on to try to defend my faith. I've had moments to defend my faith. And I've even said, hey, Jesus, I will die for you. But Jesus, he died for me. I don't need to die for him. He's not asking me to die. He's saying, how will you live for me? Do you see that in verse 32? He says, whoever acknowledges me before others. Whoever acknowledges me. Listen, we are not part of the secret service in the kingdom. We have to acknowledge this Jesus. And I would say this, we need to acknowledge him in the little things. It doesn't have to be this big, grand moment, 50,000 people or whatever. No, no, what about the one-on-one -on -one conversation with a coworker? What about with that family member who you know doesn't know the Lord, but you just take a moment to acknowledge Jesus through prayer? What about that, that, that coworker who's just been gossiping and gossiping and gossiping, and you might 
live differently and remove yourself, but will you also step in and say, hey, you know what? I, I used to be involved in those conversations, but I'm not anymore, and let me tell you why. It's because I went to church and I got my life changed by Jesus, and because of that, I live differently. Now, my, my question is, is how will you speak up about your faith? How will you just acknowledge him in the small things? It doesn't have to be this big, grand moment. It's in the, the, the little things, like why you live for Christ. Because you live for Jesus, you act a different way, but when you speak up, we just share like, hey, hey, remember? Remember when I was, my, my marriage was, was destroyed and, and now it's restored? Oh yeah, do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, let me tell you why. Hey, remember that addiction that I was so caught up in and for years and years and years and you didn't even know I was gonna live, but, but here I am, I'm alive. Let me tell you why. It's because I met this Jesus and he changed everything about me. We can be so quick to share the sunset, but what about the one who paved our way for eternity? What about the one who actually changed everything? Let me ask you, do you remember what it was like to live without any hope? what it was like to wonder where you stood with God? Do you remember what it's like to wonder what happens the moment after you die? Like wondering, would you go to heaven or would you go to hell? What it was like to live without any direction in your life? I need you to know today that there are lots of people who are still wondering. And they may see your good deeds, but they wanna hear about this Jesus. And I don't know about you, but, but I'm so thankful that somebody wasn't ashamed and weirded out to tell me about Jesus. Because they did, I have a marriage, I have an amazing daughter. Like my life, had they not told me about Jesus, I couldn't even imagine what it would look like. I would like to think that's true for you as well. And so the question is, will you say something? Will you acknowledge Jesus in the little things? Be found faithful in the little. See what God could do through that. And you might be like, okay, well, how do I actually do that? Let me give you some really practical, really practical handle, okay? You can do this today. We have this crazy series we do as a church next starts all month of july it's called at the movies we watch movies we talk about jesus kind of wild we eat popcorn come on saturday night we crack cokes together like it's a fun wild experience okay you just got to be here but what a way to be like hey like listen to your co-worker to your family listen my church you know i go to i want to let you know i go to elevate church and they're doing this weird series. I don't even really understand it all, but would you come with me? Would you just come and experience and see? And we'll go to that restaurant afterwards or whatever it may be. But like, would you just come and, and be? I need you to experience what, I, and listen, you, you don't have to come back if you don't want to, but I just want you just to, I want you to care for a moment, for a day, for a Sunday, for an hour about what I care about. Would you just acknowledge Jesus in the little moments, church? And so as we close in this series, I want us to just be reminded of the awe of God again. Because the awe of God causes us to share of God. And my prayer is that we would be in awe again. We would be amazed by him, by who he is, by what he's done. But recognize he didn't say go into all the world and keep it to yourself. He said, go into all the world and share, speak of the good things. Let somebody know your life has been forever changed and don't be ashamed. Let me pray that you would today. Father, we come before you, we thank you, God, for this minutes and these moments we share. Father, we thank you for your word. And I pray right now, God, that you would stir up an amazement again for you. God, a passion, a burning. God, to share of your goodness and of your love and of your mercy that we have received. And so, Father, we, we thank you for giving that to us. And I pray for a spirit of boldness to fall on your people today, to be bold, to just acknowledge you in all the things. 
to integrate you, the savior of our lives. We integrate you in all conversations and moments, God. May we not be afraid, but would we live with just the boldness to speak of you. Father, right now, I know that as we pray that there are those that are in this room, there are those that are tuning in online, that they have never come face to face and acknowledge you as Lord and Savior of their life. And right here, right now, I believe that your spirit is working in and through them to say yes to you, to acknowledge you. And if that's you, and you're in this room, you're online. I want to just give you a, a prayer that you can pray. What matters is that you believe it, and that you receive the free gift of salvation. What does that mean? The Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave. He sent his son, Jesus, to live this perfect, sinless life, to show us a way to live. But then he died, he was buried, and then he rose again. The Bible says that as we confess him as Lord and Savior of our lives, that we too can be saved. We're not just saved from hell, we are saved for something, to reach people, that we've been given this call, this mandate over our lives, but the first step is to acknowledge Jesus as Lord and Savior. And so if that's you, you just wanna pray this prayer, you can whisper it, you can yell it out loud, loud, loud. what matters is that you believe it. God sees you and God knows. You can say something as simple as this, Jesus today, I give you my life. I believe that you lived for me, that you died for me, that you rose again for me. Today I confess you as Lord and Savior of my life. I acknowledge you, Jesus, and I turn from my ways, and I turn and choose to follow you. And it's with all that I am that I pray. Everybody said a good amen.